Hi everybody! So, in our worrying economic times, in the middle of deep midwinter when Earth is hard as iron, these things are springing up absolutely everywhere. And what they do is they show them like this, a little wave of heat coming out. There's invariably a happy family sitting around in their underwear, sweating like pigs while outside the snow is piling deep. And I was asked to look at them and see whether they were any good or not. It says PTC ceramic heat element. PTC stands for positive thermal coefficient. What it means is the hotter something gets, the more resistive it gets. So it can't get above a certain heat because it's too resistant for the ants to flow. So it's kind of self-limiting. That's cool but doesn't do anything for the efficiency of the heater. It's just a very cool little thing. You can make your own PTC material and just get some of that, um, that silicon sealant you put around the bath, the stuff that smells like vinegar. Mix a load of graphite in there and you will have PTC rubber. And that PTC rubber can be made into heating elements if you want. As it gets hot, the rubber expands, the carbon is pulled apart and the resistance increases and it will shut itself off and it cool down and then it will conduct again and get hot and it will just control itself. So you can make that itself if you like. Now it does say here efficient power. Well, that's true because they're all true. Dual heating, which is this kind of heating where you're using electricity to create heat directly, uh, all, doesn't matter what it is, carbon, uh, cancel wire, nichrome wire, ceramic heaters, silicon carbide, they're all round about 100% efficient, so you can't get more efficient than that. So claiming that this is more efficient than any other heater, well, that's just going to be BS, absolutely. Now, when you heat up a room, what you have to do is raise the temperature of the air in that room to the temperature you want it to be, and that is a fixed physical constant. It takes so much power to raise one kilogram of one material by one degree, irrespective of how you raise it to that temperature. You need that much power to do that, and it depends on how big room is and how much you're going to be heating, not on the heater. The heater can only do what it can do, and this is 500 watts. So it will put out 500 watts. And if you need five kilowatts to heat that room in 20 minutes to a comfortable temperature, you need five kilowatts. This will maybe get it if your insulation is great, but it'll take 10 times as long. So instead of 20 minutes, it'll be 200 minutes that you're sitting there cold until this gets it to any kind of temperature. And of course, whenever you see the adverts for these, people are happy in a matter of seconds. Anyway, let's get out of the box and have a bit of a better look at it. Okay, let's get the lid off. There we go. And that's what's inside. You've got a control board. We've got what is obviously a power supply there. Little LED, fan, and the PTC heating element. Let's take those components out. Okay, so that's all the electronics out of the box. And here's the bit that plugged in. The first thing to notice, look as hard as you can. You're not going to find a fuse in there. There's no fuse in it. It plugs straight in. Now, obviously, they're relying on... Um, the circuit breakers, because if anything goes wrong with that, there's no way that that's going to blow a fuse, because there isn't a fuse, which is kind of cool. Anyway, it comes straight into this power board here. Now, this one comes through the switch, and is joined here and here. And if we look at that, we can see that they're actually soldered together on the same pad, so they're directly connected, and obviously that's going to these two, and there appears to be two elements. So there's this one, and this one, and this one. These two are the neutral, the centre one is the live, and they're the PTC heating elements right there. And these are just fins to carry the heat away, but those are the actual heating elements, those little things there. That's a 12 volt fan, then we've got an LED right there, we've got a little control board which is nothing more than a few switches, a display and a, an IC control chip coming from the main power board. So this power board is actually generating a 5 volt, a 12 volt and directly through to the mains on this. So that's just a power board there. That's a switch, that's the plug, that's the control board where they've got that little IC and a few switches. Then we've got quite simply an LED going through the this plastic thing and a PC fan at 12 volts. This thing is the actual heating element and this is supposed to run from uh, 230 volts UK supply. Okay, this thing wasn't cheap. It was about 30 quid actually. And there's a couple of things to talk about that are kind of worrying. The first thing is there's no fusing 
in it at all. I mean, you know, there's uh, no fuse in the plug, there's no fuse on the board, there's no thermal cutout, and they've done that because they rely on the behaviour of this. This is the ceramic heating element, which I said was a PTC, positive thermal coefficient. The hotter it gets, the more resistive it gets until it gets resistant enough that the current can't flow. So that's what it's relying on. But these things still get super hot, eh? They get a quite uh, high temperature. And of course, it's got this thing, which it relies on as well. And it's just a fan, and, and, and they break, they stop. If it breaks and stops, then that temperature is going to get enough to melt that plastic case. And of course, you're not supposed to cover these things. If you cover them, you equally are going to raise that temperature before this has time to actually cool down. Uh, and that's a, a little bit of a worry. Now, when I took this apart and the wiring loom, the positive actually was loose in the crimp. I mean, people make these things. They're mechanical. They're made by people. There are faults that happen. And that wire that had dropped, of course, is just going to blow your house mains. So without any protection at all in these things, relying only on this, and I don't think that's good enough for a product myself. I think you're going to have some issues with that, and they might want to think about doing something like putting in a fuse or um, maybe a thermal cutout, which it doesn't lack. It doesn't have. The other thing that I, I want to talk about are actual PTCs. Whenever you read about these ceramic heaters, they always, always say they're super efficient. I say 100% efficient. Now, that's true of any dual heater. What it means is that one watt of electricity is turned directly into one watt of heating. As a matter of if it's this, or this, which came out of a toaster, or this, which came out of a fan heater, they are all 100% efficient. So that is just pure advertising BS. The other thing they say is that they heat up quickly. Well, that's very true. They do get hot quickly because when you turn this on, it draws one and a half kilowatts and settles down to 500 watts when it gets to its operating temperature and the resistance is high enough to keep it at 500 watts, but it draws at one and a half kilowatts when it first turns on. As it operates, they say it gets um, to temperature quickly and then stays at that temperature. Well, yes it does, but of course that's not the point of a heater. A heater is meant to transfer that heat into the space and heat the space. Now it's really simple thermodynamics, heat only flows one way from hot to cold. If it's not flowing from hot to cold, well, it's useless as a heater because it's not heating anything, it's keeping the heat in there. So the fact that it stays hot actually is a bit disingenuous. It doesn't matter if it stays hot because it's not doing you any good. It does heat up quickly, yes, but it's not transferring that heat any more quickly because the rate of transfer, that is the rate at which you heat up the air, is going to be pretty much the same anyway. And if this stays hot and the air is not cooling it, then that's as much use as a chocolate teapot because you want it to be a heater. And that rate of transfer is going to be pretty much fixed. So whenever you read these things when they say, oh yeah, they're super efficient and they get hot quickly and stay hot longer. Well, they do get hot quickly, but they take more power to do that. They don't stay hot longer because they're transferring the heat to the room, which is what you want them to do, and they're as efficient as any other heater. So it's, it's all a lot of BS. Uh, and these particular ones, actually, without any safety whatsoever, well, I, I would worry about them. Eh? You know, I mean, I'm not a huge safety sally, but <laughs> if, if they're not even putting a fuse in the plug and it's running on mains, then I might be a, a little bit more concerned about that. Um, PTCs, I mean, they're, they're awesome things. Like I say, you can make your own and they do have a tremendous amount of use. I mean, one thing is they're um, solid state and, and they're not prone to um, breaking anytime soon. But they do break, they overheat, they crack, they burn. So in themselves, they will break, but they are a bit more stable, but they're certainly not cheaper than uh, nichrome wire. Nichrome wire is prone to oxidation. These aren't. So they're probably going to last a bit longer, that's for sure. And it's going to be a bit six and two threes, really, because they are a hell of a lot more expensive. I mean, that, 30 quid, and a fan heater, seven quid, so it's a hell of a lot more expensive. But they are cannot be. Straightforward physics, guys, they cannot be more efficient than a fan heater, because a fan heater is 100% efficient. That little quirk about them heating up quickly, well, it just takes more power. When you're thinking about heating, it's not actually this 
that's the important bit. Everybody makes out that this is the important bit. It isn't. It takes a certain amount of energy to heat a space to a certain temperature, irrespective of how you heat it. You might heat it with coal, wood, gas, electricity, ceramics, whatever you heat it with, the same energy is required to heat that space. It's the space you're heating, not the heat you're using to heat it. Because these things are all 100% efficient, irrespective of being ceramic or wire or carbon or carbide, doesn't matter. So overall, well, I don't think there's anything special about them particularly. If you like them, knock yourself out, why not? But will they heat your room to a comfortable temperature at 500 watts? Not a chance. And if they did heat your room, looks like any other electric heater, oh, it would cost you the same. To heat your room to the same temperature, use the same energy with 100% efficient, that would be the same price as that. Anyway. I hope that was of interest. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.